evening and welcome to the evening news this week in review for the week ending Saturday, April 6, 2024. I am Jemima Holmes. Thank you for joining us. For the next 30 minutes, we will recap some of the top stories that were featured during the past week. Some two weeks after, Guyana signed a U.S. $23.27 million contract with India to purchase aircraft for its military. The planes have officially touched down in the country. Here is this report filed on Monday. The Hindustan Aeronautics Limited has delivered two Dornier 228 planes to the Guyana Defense Force. The planes arrived at Chedi Jagan International Airport on Sunday evening aboard two Boeing C-17 Globemaster military transport planes. This significant acquisition was made possible with a $23.27 US million dollar loan from Export Import Bank of India. An agreement in this regard was signed on March 15 between Guyanese Finance Minister and Deputy GM of Exim Bank, making it the first ever defense line of credit that India has signed with any Caribbean nation. It is reported that the planes are set to be ideal for short takeoff and landing for Guyana's terrain and would be used for maritime patrol as well as resupply of military bases, troop movement to interior locations. This development to procure defense assets from the Asian government comes on the heels of the Irfan Ali-led administration taking significant steps to modernize the GDF with the acquisition of new equipment and supplies as well as capacity building. Meanwhile, international media reports that Guyana also plans to purchase patrol vehicles, radars and armored vehicles from India. India and Guyana have already established strong defense cooperation with several GDF members undergoing various levels of training within the Indian military. Guyana and India established diplomatic relations on May 26, 1966. Michelle Henry, The Evening News. President Dr. Irfan Ali on Tuesday morning read the Riot Act to the management and other officials of the Guyana Power and Light, making it clear that while the power outages have their genesis in mismanagement from 2015 to 2020, he is still dissatisfied with the service being provided. Gerald Bryan had this story. Guyana has been enduring a spate of blackouts over the past week, following what the Guyana Power and Light GPL has described as engine failures at various locations. On Tuesday at State House, President Dr. Irfan Ali sat down with the management of GPL as well as Power Producers and Distributors Incorporated PPDI, and Wartilla, two companies that play integral roles in generating the power. During the meeting, the first of a series of planned meetings, the head of state read the riot act to them over the poor performance of the power company. In fact, the president expresses dissatisfaction with the level of service being provided to Guyanese. Meanwhile, the president in his statement also acknowledged that his government inherited a number of problems at GPL in 2020. According to him, this is due to a lack of maintenance and investments from the former APNU AFC government. Added to this, according to President Ali, is the growth in energy demand and the lack of redundancy in an aging system. Meanwhile, the president also revealed that the government has already approached the United Kingdom Export Finance UKEF, to explore financing for the aging transmission system. Additionally, President Ali said that GPL has been tasked with considering alternative options to meet short-term demand for power. This is especially since demand is expected to grow by 30 megawatts this year and the gas to energy project, which will introduce 300 megawatts of power, does not come on stream until next year. Jarrell O'Brien, The Evening News. President Dr. Irfan Ali on Wednesday ordered that penalties outlined in a number of government contracts be enforced against companies that continue to default on their contractual obligations. Following an early morning meeting with representatives of ministries and agencies responsible for awarding and monitoring government contracts, the head of state also disclosed that a new unit would be established to ensure proper compliance by companies executing works for the state. Trishel Sobers filed this report. On Wednesday morning at State House, President Dr. Irfan Ali met with engineers and project managers from the Ministries of Public Works and Housing to discuss the status of major infrastructure projects. These include the Cemetery Road project, which is being executed by Avinash Construction and Metal Works Company, the Conversation Tree Street project awarded to Calco Guyana Incorporated and Jack Mohan Construction and General Supplies, the Diamond to Busby Dam Highway project and all four-lane highways. 
The project updates will be provided to the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Anil Nanlal, who has been tasked with issuing letters of notice for defaulting contractors. Additionally, the Ministry of Finance was tasked with calculating the liquidated damages. Liquidated damages refer to a provision allowing for the payment of a specified sum in the case of a breach of contract. In this case, the President says government will go after those defaulting contractors that have gone past their project deadline and justifiable extensions. All the projects that are beyond contract time, <coughs> we have exhausted extensions that were justified. The issue will just so I left the so all the reasons instructed that we should get the damages be deducted. The key is we cannot tolerate the Minister of Finance will ensure that the employment monitors verify that the liquidity damages is calculated and deducted. Further, the head of state disclosed that actions must now be taken to strengthen project management teams in the public sector. As a result, the Attorney General's office will now have a specialized unit dealing with contracts and project management as part of efforts to ensure compliance. President Ali noted that all project managers and senior engineers under this unit will be properly qualified. We are adopting a no-nonsense approach in contract management. We're going to have an independent team managing or uh, reviewing contract files, project files out, so that we have project audits. As project engineers and project managers, you have to ensure that the file is updated the minutes are recorded, signed, because as we take action, as we take action, we have to get our paper clear and take more intact. Last month, President Ali had given a stern warning to defaulting contractors, telling them that the government will pursue the requisite actions for any breach of contracts. Trisha Silvers, Evening News. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Looking to bring your dream home to reality? Or simply taking on a home improvement project? Then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1,000 Berger Paint Original Hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Sotco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do it best store. Located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rhineville. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. 
President Dr. Irfan Ali has reiterated Guyana's commitment to a peaceful outcome of the ongoing border controversy with its South American neighbor, Venezuela. But in the same breath, he noted that Guyana is being watchful of the developments in Caracas. The Guyanese head of state made these remarks on Thursday as he delivered a feature address at the sixth annual Security Challenges in Latin America Forum on the theme, Environmental Protection, Land Use in the Amazon Basin and Marine Conservation. During a subsequent question and answer segment, President Ali was asked about Venezuela's latest attempt to annex Guyana's Essequibo region and its impact on the region. Let's have a look at his response. We are pursuing a peaceful outcome. Guyana's objective is to ensure that this region remains stable, a region of peace. So our form, first form of defense is uh, diplomacy. We want peaceful coexistence with our neighbors. We want to ensure that no action uh, is initiated from Guyana that can destabilize the region, that can contribute to uh, the creation of one more problem in the world. We want to help to removing problems from the world. So, uh, but at the same time, we are not naive. We are very careful, uh, very watchful about everything that is happening. Uh, we believe in international law. We have called upon our neighbors to participate fully in the ICJ process and to respect the outcome of the ICJ process. But we are a country that is acutely aware of where our borders are, and we are a country that is determined to ensure that all that is contained within our borders remain within our borders and remain uh, the, the assets of Guyana. We have no intention of coveting any other assets from any one of our neighbors. Our only intention is to live peacefully and to develop our country for the Guyanese people, but more importantly, ensuring that our prosperity leads to regional prosperity. Recently, we had a trilateral between Guyana, Suriname, and Brazil with President uh, Santoki and President Lula and we have, uh, we have outlined very clearly what we see this integration, uh, how we see the integration uh, should look like and would look like. And Venezuela must understand that they're part of a region that is working on establishing strong credentials in relation to the rule of law, democracy, respect for each other, respect for territorial integrity, and we're going to do all that we can to encourage our neighbors to be good global citizens and not to deviate from the path of what is good for the citizens of the region and the citizens of Guyana and Venezuela. Also on Thursday, we reported that as wildfires continue to rage in several communities across Guyana, several agencies have been mobilized to help citizens affected medically and economically. Trisha Sobers reported a number of residents from an Amerindian village were forced to evacuate as threat of the natural disaster intensified. On Wednesday, raging wildfires in the communities of Santa Mission and Santa Aratak Region 3 Essequibo Islands west of Marara reach a critical point, rendering it impossible for firefighters to access the affected areas for extinguishing efforts. As a result, joint service teams shift their focus to ensuring the safety and well-being of the residents through swift evacuation measures. The dense smoke emanating from the fire has prompted the evacuation of over 20 individuals from Santa Mission and neighboring village Santa Aratak. Majority of the evacuees have found temporary shelters at the Timiri Primary School, while some are being accommodated by their relatives. During his weekly press conference, Vice President Dr. Bajak Dio disclosed that the health ministry is equipped and ready to provide care to individuals battling health complications as a result of fires. These include smoke inhalation, heat stress, radiation and air pollution. Further, the Civil Defense Commission is setting up shelters across the country and packaging food supplies for persons displaced by wildfires. While no homes or personal assets have been destroyed thus far, 
The vice president explained that farming communities that depend on agriculture are among those in need of urgent assistance. As the president pointed out, hampers for some of the communities in Region 9 that have had all their crops. And those places, people mainly deal with subsistence farming. It's not like the coastal areas where people work elsewhere. They're mainly subsistence farming. So the issue is they don't just lose income, they lose food, a source of food. And therefore, we have supplied hampers. We're sending in cassava from the coast to some of their hinterland communities. Meanwhile, the vice president explained that future investments garnered will strengthen Guyana's preparedness to better manage climate-related challenges. The extreme weather that we will continue to experience, that is why we are spending so much of our resources and adaptation measures. You know that the entire sum of money that we are going to raise from the sale of forest carbon, um, maybe over $2 billion U.S. dollars will be spent from, uh, in, the, in the country on adaptation. Guyana has experienced over 1,300 wildfires since January, and this is a direct result of the El Nino phenomenon, which is responsible for the prolonged dry season. Joint service teams are utilizing satellite imagery surveillance to monitor fires countrywide, while land and air techniques are being used to prevent fires from escalating. Trishel Sobers, Evening News. Luana McAllister reported on Friday that Vice President Dr. Barra Jagdio has hinted at the possibility of changes in the current management at the state-owned Guyana Power & Light in the face of heightened power outages in recent weeks. Here's that story. Now the situation is bad. There, no, there is no sugarcoating this. That was Vice President Bar Jagdio commenting on the spate of blackouts over the past week, which the Ghana Power and Light has attributed to engine failures at different locations. During his weekly press conference on Thursday, the Vice President sympathized with Guyanese who are affected by frequent power outages, but assured steps are being taken to address this situation. We are not going to say that people are not justified in the harsh comments they make because it we feel it ourselves because we live here and we're consumers it's not that the government is aloof from these concerns so sometimes explanations don't help at that moment but i want people to consider what we are faced with so yes the performance of gpl is atrocious in many cases but also we are dealing with a real fact, growth in demand and the old equipment. And we have to fix it. Whatever it takes, we can continue with these blackouts, whether it may, means management changes, upgrading management, buying more power. The vice president comments come on the heels of President Dr. Irfan Ali saying on Wednesday that rather than a management shakeup, the electricity sector is more in need of technical capacity, which could be imported since they have been unable to fill these gaps locally. Currently, Peak demand for electricity is at 180 megawatts, while GPL's generating capacity is at 165 megawatts, given its challenges. According to Jagdio, government is seeking to purchase an additional 40 to 80 megawatts of power in the medium term to offset increasing demands. Our medium term plan, next year, 300 megawatts coming in to replace all of these. Right now, we're looking to buy another maybe 40 to 80 megawatts of power. We are already in the process of doing this because this will, for two years, we will buy this power for until a mile, um, not a mile, the gas to energy project comes. As part of the gas to energy project, a 300 megawatts power plant is being constructed at Wales West Bank Demerara and will utilize natural gas from offshore Guyana. This will be supplemented by the 165 megawatts Milo Falls hydropower project that the government is working on reviving. Lawanda McAllister for the Evening News. 
The Commonwealth Secretariat has expressed concerns over the recent actions by President Nicolas Maduro, who enacted laws to establish Guyana's Essequibo region as a state within Venezuela. In a statement on Saturday, Secretary General Patricia Scotland reaffirmed her support for Guyana while also renewing the Commonwealth's position that the border controversy between the two countries should be settled at the International Court of Justice. Vanu Manichand had this story. The Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland said she received a letter from President Dr. Irfan Ali who has expressed concerns that Venezuela's next move would be to implement its plan for the seizure of Guyana's sovereign territory. The organic law promulgated by President Nicolas Maduro on Wednesday purports to exercise control over two-thirds of the sovereign territory of Guyana, the Essequibo. According to the Commonwealth SG, this legislation not only allows for the creation of a new state in Venezuela, but will also give the Venezuelan leader the power to elect a governor and the National Assembly of Venezuela will have legislative functions in this territory. The Secretariat reminded of the December 1, 2023 provisional measures issued by the International Court of Justice that bars Venezuela from taking any action to modify the border controversy pending the outcome of the case before the court. As such, the Commonwealth Secretary General said on Saturday, quote, Venezuela's latest actions appear to directly contravene the ICJ order and also the spirit of the 14 December 2023 Joint Declaration of Argyle for dialogue and peace between Guyana and Venezuela, where both states agreed to use international law and diplomatic means to address the controversy and to refrain from escalating the conflict. The Commonwealth affirms that the ICJ process is the appropriate and lawful means to address the matter under international law. End quote. Guyana moved to the World Court in 2018 to obtain a final and binding ruling on the validity of the 1899 arbitral award that set the land boundaries between the two countries. However, President Maduro declared that Venezuela does not and will never recognize the arbitral award and also reiterated the Spanish-speaking nation's non-recognition of the ICJ. Nevertheless, SG Scotland offered her continued support as well as that of the Commonwealth to help resolve this matter by peaceful means. She said, quote, I am encouraged by the form and consistent support from the entire Commonwealth family for the government and people of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. I also call on member states to give whatever support they may feel appropriate to Guyana in this time of need. The Commonwealth Secretary General also urged the Venezuelan government and people to abide by the principles of international law and to manage the dispute in ways that that guarantee the peace and stability of the Caribbean region. Reporting for the Evening News, Vanu Manik Chand. This brings us to the end of today's Week in Review. Join us again next week for the Evening News. Thanks for watching and do have a safe and productive week ahead. Goodbye. There is a reason why TVG Channel 28 is Guyana's number one television station. We are the home of one of the nation's most watched television newscasts, The Evening News, with an unmatched national reach, the best in children's content, music, movies, and daily soaps. We plan with the viewer at heart. In partnership with cable provider Northwest TV Incorporated, we reach as far as Port Kaituma in Region 1, as well as from Charity to Supanam in Region 2, among other hard-to-reach interior regions. As such, we can guarantee the highest value for advertisers. To advertise with us, contact our marketing department on telephone numbers 231-0544 or 223-7230 or email us at marketing at guyanatimesgy.com for more information on affordable packages.
TVG Channel 28, Wholesome Family Entertainment. An employment opportunity exists at one of the largest media houses in Guyana for a studio operator. Qualifications, passes in five CSEC subjects, grades one to three, including maths and English. Must have at least one year's experience in television production. Must be mature and a team player. Experience in video editing and graphic design would be an asset. Salaries commensurate with qualifications and experience. Send applications to the general manager, Times Media Group, Queen's Atlantic Industry, Industrial Estate, Industrial Site, Romvelt, Georgetown, or email applications to hr at guyanatimesgy.com. Only shortlisted candidates will be contacted. Closing date is April 30, 2024.